Hi guys, welcome back to what's becoming quite an extended series on the skeleton boilerplate. What you see in front of you here is the final layout that we've been working toward the, the last few videos. Um, some of it will look very familiar to you because you will have already completed it. If we take a look at what we've done so far, this is what this is what we have. You should have something more or less uh, similar to this. Uh, so the glaring difference between these two uh, layouts is this central section here. So that's what we're going to be concentrating on today. Uh, and in doing so, we'll pretty much complete uh, the whole uh, layout. So what we're going to do uh, during the course of this video is um, flesh this whole section out. We're going to be concentrating on all the styling that goes with that. We'll be looking at bits and pieces such as the tabs, uh, form elements and uh, flexible video which is quite important. Uh, but during this first video what we're going to do is look at the uh, article section, the blog posts themselves um, which is going to involve nesting columns within skeleton which is quite a, a necessary subject to cover. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now if we look at what we've got uh, to begin with, our central section comprises two uh, columns. So if we have a look at those, we'll notice we're working with uh, a container of 16 columns and our left hand column here is a 10 column and the one on the right, which is going to be our sidebar, is six columns. Now what we're going to do for our blog post, sticking them in this uh, 10 column section here, is we're going to contain each of these blog posts within an article and then within those articles we're going to split those into two, uh, two further column sections. Uh, one of them is going to be a three column and the other one uh, to bring it up to the total of 10 is going to be a seven column section. Um, now what's important is we take a look at exactly how the columns in skeleton are laid out uh, you'll notice if I highlight each one that each one comprises a blue area which is its uh, fixed div dimension plus the orange margins on the left and the right. That applies to this 10 column and see the same for the 6 column there as well. Now if I pull you over to Photoshop I'll show you a little demonstration of uh, exactly what we're up against. Here we have our columns with their fixed widths and their margins. Now. Uh, we haven't actually nested any columns up until this point um, but it's perfectly possible what we want to be doing is taking uh, say for example this is our 10 column here this is our main blog area we want to be taking more columns and just slotting them in to that area like this but as you can see from this diagram uh, the problem that we're up against is that the the left and the right margins uh, are going to be making the columns that we're nesting too wide so they're going to break the whole layout and you'll end up with the the, the column on the right uh, breaking free and uh, clearing. So what we're going to need to do effectively I'm going to visually demonstrate this is slice off the margins uh, on the left and the right of any nested column groups and that way they will fit in uh, assuming that the totals tally up nicely they will fit perfectly within uh, any other t uh, columns you want to nest them in. Now we do that uh, by applying an extra class of alpha to the leftmost column uh, and an additional class of omega to the column on the right and that will slice off those margins for us as dictated by skeletons framework and if I just highlight that for you you can see here we've got our seven columns uh, which has its uh, margin still intact on the left uh, but as it has a class of Omega uh, it's had its margin on the right removed and the same applies to our three columns here on the left uh, the margin on the left has been uh, reduced to zero that way they can uh, firmly sit in amongst this ten column section we've got laid out so that's enough jabbering on about that. Let's uh, open up our project and actually um, actually flesh out that markup so we can begin uh, taking things further. Now we'll open up index.html and uh, let's see where are we. 
we have our flex slider here which is familiar to all of you and here are the two areas that we're going to be concentrating uh, on now so within these 10 columns I want to um, begin by placing an article element now article elements uh, are used to contain uh, or post I used to contain any information which can be um, imagined in a in an RSS syndication in a, a sort of an independent bit of information so that you know exactly what it's about it's got maybe a header it's got a bit of text maybe some other information it's a significant and meaningful selection of uh, content in its own right um, that's obviously very appropriate for our blog posts they have titles they have categories and meta information and they have images so we're just going to uh, organize a whole collection of articles so within those articles we wanted our additional columns to split things up these are our nested columns so they were going to be uh, the first one was going to be three columns uh, like so those are the um, classes that we need to describe the columns I should call that three just to make it clearer and then we want to do a second one of seven and that of course takes our tally up of our nested columns up to the ten that they're contained within uh, of course now as we discussed I need to give this first one a class of alpha and the last one a class of omega that will sort that out uh, for styling purposes I also want to be able to reference uh, the fact that this left column has got a thumbnail within it and I have already got a thumbnail image which I've prepared so I'm just going to grab that throw that into my images folder this is what it looks like very nice and it's quite large as well 300 by 300 uh, which is the maximum size we're going to need uh, in order to uh, cater for any potential flexibility um, okay so we're going to stick that within a figure element uh, figures of course we've styled previously to give us that sort of uh, white background uh, effect which is quite nice uh, so we've got a source and it's in our images folder and I called it um, Iceland.jpg alright give it some more text alright that should be as simple as that uh, nothing else needed there within our blog information itself we want a paragraph which we're going to give a class of breadcrumbs for styling purposes uh, if I just bring it back and show you what we're talking about that's this little breadcrumb trail at the top here which is going to uh, house any uh, categories or whatever like so and then we'll just add a couple of links breadcrumb and we'll add a greater than symbol and a second anchor like so just to illustrate our breadcrumbs we've got an h2 heading which I'm going to copy and paste generic nonsense and then we've got our meta information as well so we've got some more rubbish here posted by I'll put a link in there uh, some sort of name there we go and then we'll add another anchor typical blog stuff all right so that's our meta content and then I've got a paragraph which I can copy and paste like so now the last thing I want to put within these blog posts within these articles uh, is a horizontal rule which is going to form a little dotted area so let's um, 
Let's see how that's working. Well, it's working extremely well. I don't seem to need any styling at all. Uh, I think I can probably remove some of the spacing on this breadcrumb trail, because obviously with it being a paragraph, uh, it's got a margin on the bottom. So I'll probably remove that margin, that's not necessary. So, let's open up styles. And let's find somewhere where we can put our blog information. Got a flex slider stuff there. Let's put some blog information here. So the first thing I wanted to do um, yeah. style of breadcrumbs and make the margin on the bottom slightly smaller. Still of course as I keep bleating on uh, relevant to our baseline grid of 7 uh, pixels. I think what I'm also going to do is remove the margin on the bottom of the meta paragraph as well. Okay, I'm just going to turn on my uh, reloader. Okay. So that makes things uh, a bit neater. Um, one thing I can see here is additional padding underneath the image within the figure caption. Um, that needs dealing with. I thought I'd already dealt with that actually, uh, but apparently not. Have I got nowhere in here? Here's my figure. What I need to do is give that a line height of zero pixels because that's having an effect. There we go. That's made the figure uh, snug neatly around the image there. That's uh, something to bear in mind. Okay, so that's uh, good. The horizontal rule needs changing because we did style that ever so slightly. So I'm just going to copy and paste that from my notes here. There we go. Uh, border norm, border bottom uh, dashed like that. And then I've given it uh, relevant margins as well. What I can also do now is copy and paste uh, a few of these things. There we go. So we now have a few of these articles. One, two, three, four. No. Perhaps too many. Anyway, that's fine. So now if we look at our existing example uh, we've also got this pagination at the bottom here so uh, so let's just uh, add that to our markup uh, where are I? so underneath all my blog posts I'm going to add some pagination now obviously pagination is a form of navigation so we want to wrap that within a nav object and it'll be typically an unordered list containing list items uh, list items having within them anchors like so Okay, and I'm going to make sure that my first anchor here has a class of selected, just so we can style that differently. So, in pagination, bring that up and save. And that, of course, looks like nothing more than styled uh, list anchors. So, let's style that next. Pagination. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is make sure that the nav item itself 
the URL within that has a width of 100%. That means that we can center everything within it perfectly nicely by giving it text align of center. And I'm going to give it some margin just to keep spacing consistent. Then I want to make sure that the list items within that display in line. So we'll take a look at that now. And you can see we've got our six little uh, six little links perfectly centered within the page, irrespective of course of how we size the page. of an issue with the image size uh, there so we'll deal with that with media queries in a minute uh, so to continue styling our little pagination links now we're going to give these a display of inline block which will allow us to determine their dimensions but they'll still behave like inline elements so we're going to make sure that they're perfectly uh, square I can do these with uh, EMs as well but uh, the basis of skeleton is largely uh, pixels so we'll just keep it with pixels for the time being um, and our text align centered within those little squares we've done there a padding of seven pixels either side get rid of any underlining of the text decoration and a font weight of bold so that should be a good start made a mistake on of course, to get rid of that underline, not have it stated. All right, so now they need hover states. Uh, actually, we need a border on the bottom of select uh, on the bottom of them as well. So border bottom, just so it looks exactly like the design from our original PSD. Something like that. Now, of course, we defined the dimensions as being square, uh, and given that right at the very beginning of our tutorial uh, we pointed out that we'd be using uh, border box box sizing uh, for that reason the border is of course displaying within the boundaries of our squares that we've defined there as 35 pixels okay now let's uh, add a hover state and a selected state like so And we're going to simply change the background and I'm going to give it a URL of uh, one of our familiar background textures like so and then I give it a default background color just in case so we'll get rid of the border at the bottom and we'll give it a color of white and there we go and you can see having removed the border uh, that the the dimensions remain true to the square that we uh, that we defined so that's perfect so now what we have is this slight issue of our thumbnails here they reach this point and that's not ideal um, we didn't provide images that are wide enough for mobile devices of this this size but they're arguably too large anyway you don't need resources this large being dragged in for a simple blog post preview so I would suggest that the best thing we can do here to free up a lot of real estate as well is just to uh, to get rid of them um, so we'll do that now within our media queries let's remind ourselves of what these are uh, these are the divs with a class of thumbnail within each article so if we go down to our media queries and we find the media query of uh, maximum width 767 so that deals with all devices of screen 
widths up to that size. Um, in other words, all uh, mobile uh, devices. Um, let's see, let's target it like so, article thumbnail, and we want to state that we'll display it uh, not at all. Um, now you can see that's had no effect. So let's just see what's happened there. We've got the class name correct. It's thumbnail. But if we look down at the first rule here, we'll see that what we're being pointed to uh, are all these column dimensions. So that's obviously a question of specificity, and we're being uh, we're being fed all these instead. So they're overwriting our rule there. So if we just improve that by specifying that it's a thumbnail uh, and it's a three column. Let's see. All right, so that gets rid of it in that case. So that's quite nice uh, because it means that mobile devices won't even bother loading those resources, um, which is obviously uh, very bandwidth friendly. Okay, so I think we've covered enough in this first video. Uh, we've dealt with this left-hand column perfectly fine. Uh, the next thing to do is start smartening up the, uh, the sidebar there.